I know two weeks ago I was uh, uh, praising the street crew for uh, all the good work they've been doing and cleaning up the snow. Little, I, little did I know then that we're going to get a couple more feet of it in the last couple of weeks. And I again want to say what a good job the street crews have been doing and also I think the citizens of Winona have been doing a great job too as I see drivers I'm driving around and I'm seeing neighbors helping neighbors and I've seen you know people courteously waiting for cars to get through in narrow streets and all of that and um, ran into a woman in the grocery store and I, she said hi mayor and I said hi and she, I said how you doing she said I'm surviving and I think that's that's what we're all kind of doing right now with the uh, with all the snow, so hopefully we'll get a little break here and get some uh, some good melting too coming up. Also, want to uh, make a retirement announcement. Um, the city recognizes Bill Scholberg for his 25 years of service and recent retirement. Bill started with the Winona Police Department on February 14, 1994, and retired on February 28, 2019. The city recognizes his dedication and commitment to the Winona community, and he will be missed by the department. Bill, we wish you congratulations and best wishes for a long, happy, and healthy retirement. And that's all I have tonight, city manager. I was at Bill's retirement party, Your Honor, and they ran out of donuts by the time I got there, so. <laughs> I just want to remind uh, folks that March 8th is disco night at Bud Kang Arena from, I think, 6 to 9 p.m. And odd even parking will be going on all week as we try to open up the streets and widen them out for everybody. That's all I have. Thank you. And does alternate side parking in March 15th? I think it's yeah. supposed to. Yeah, okay. So, knock on wood. All right. Um, roll call. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley. Here. Moeller. Here. Alexander. Biden. Here. Wojciechowski. Here. Schulmeyer. Here. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1, appointments to the Human Rights Commission of Linda Sunby and Rosine Tenenbaum. Move to approve the appointments. Second. Second. Motion by George, seconded by Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 3.2 is a request for a temporary on sale wine and malt liquor license for St. Mary's Church for their Luck of the Irish Festival. Move to approve that request. Second that. Motion by Al, seconded by Pam. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 3.3 is a request for the Main Street Touch a Truck and Play Streets event to be held on May 11th. Make a motion to approve the request. Second. Motion by Eileen, seconded by George. Um, Emily is here. Did you want to say anything? No? Okay. Second, there's no construction that we have to work around this year. Well, that'll be good. Any, uh, George? How many years is this now, Emily? Uh, <clears throat> Mary Council, this is the sixth touch a truck. Okay. Um, it will be the first con or second consecutive year that we haven't had to completely rearrange where touch a truck is going to be. There's been gas. Uh, line mitigations, there's been construction, there's been a lot of different things to move it, and I think we found the sweet spot last year. That's a good event. Okay, anything else? <clears throat> we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. <clears throat> Item 3.4 is the license agreement and temporary liquor license for the Midwest Music Fest for May 3rd and 4th. Move to approve. Second that. Motion by George, second by Pam. Discussion? Parker's here. Did you want to add anything? Uh, the only thing I would say is that we're uh, really excited about all the good work that happened at the levy and on the side. And it'll be the first, first year, I guess, to be able to use both those new spaces. So we're excited to bring a bunch of people down and, and uh, see how it works out. And you have an event coming up, I think, a fundraising event? That's the next <laughs> item. That's what I thought. <laughs> Stuff's Quick. coming up to here. Just a question, uh, is the historic Masonic temple going to be available? I assume it is. Yes. But, uh, you know, notice that date and what we've had going on there. So, good. George? And I have to give your group a lot of credit from when it started to now. It has 
growing every year, growing every year in a good event. All right, anything else? I guess we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 3.5 is the temporary liquor license for Midwest Music Fest event at the History Center on Saturday, March 9th. <clears throat> so moved. Second. second. Uh, motion by George, second by Paul. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 3.6 is the update on the Winona Park Comprehensive Plan. Council meeting. However, with our work in the comprehensive plan, one of the um, areas that was suggested we work on is our communication to the public. I think coming to council is a good place to do that in, in an update form. We chose tonight not to do pre council but to actually have it at the meeting tonight. Um, so, not only does it meet you know, those um, requirements of the comp plan, but we also, as a staff, has said when significant markers occur for the implementation of the plan, we would come to council with information before any action items would come forward. Tonight is one of those times. Uh, this item, of course, doesn't have any action to it. It's an informational piece. But as you'll see toward the end of the presentation, we, we do have a funding recommendation that we'll bring forward at the March 18th meeting um, regarding the Bluff Traverse plan. The other reason why we're coming tonight specifically is really focused on timing. Um, if we're going to move forward with the implementation of the comp plan, specifically the block traverse plan, there are items that, again, markers that we need to meet. If we're going to do work within the block traverse area, uh, one of the things that we need to do is get a land disturbance permit. We need to go to the Planning Commission soon in order to do that. So prior to going to the Planning Commission, we come to Council and see if you're in favor of that. We would need to go to the Board of Adjustments here uh, soon to get a variance on uh, the trail width uh, for this project. Again, we know that we need to come to you for funding opportunities or um, if you choose to allocate funds for the project. And then as you've heard me say several times, we're coming up uh, to the deadline of legacy funding. So a key component, again, to the presentation tonight, you'll see is that the city is going to need to allocate some dollars to show to uh, the state that we're serious about this project. We're going to have to have some dollars allocated to this project in order for that application to be taken seriously. So I did want to start tonight with a map that you have on the screen, not the one that's in front of you currently. This is the overall trail uh, corridors and the priority that was develop uh, through the park's comprehensive plan. On the bottom section of that plan, or the, you know, obviously the south side of Winona, that's the bluff area, and that's where we've uh, talked primarily about the bluff traverse. Remember, again, it was a high priority. So again, we're working on that. That's obvious. You're going to hear more about that here in a minute from, from Ross. The other piece that I wanted to mention is the section 2B, uh, the flyway trail. So uh, the state of Wisconsin, as you've uh, reassured through some council action that that is a good place for a uh, trail to come into Agamene Park and then enter into Winona through Latch Island, connect to the bridge. Uh, we are currently negotiating with uh, the state of Wisconsin and Buffalo County on that flyway trail. We expect uh, primarily in April or May, most likely, we'll bring back an agreement that needs to be signed for that connection and that construction to work. So that's also not very far away. Within the next couple council meetings, we'll need to bring that agreement if that flyway trail is indeed in going to connect to um, Agamene Park. The other piece that we wanted to mention is that we are currently also reviewing um, all the properties along the riverfront trail. So really that section 3A 
um, looking at access and alignments for a possible trail um, along the riverfront. So again, we're looking at those, um, really the access points due to, due to the levee. So again, as we mentioned, I think when, when the comp plan was first approved, there are some priority prioritization to these corridors, but we are continuing to work across those priorities and on different corridors of the trail. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ross before I step back up. He's going to give some more detail on the bluff traverse. All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so as Chad said, I'm just going to kind of provide some more detail on uh, what we are looking at proposing at the next council meeting for initial funding of the Block Traverse project. Uh, so I don't have this on a printout for you, but on the screen behind you is just a brief overview uh, of some of the proposed uh, developments. Um, so we're looking at uh, assessments, and I'll kind of go into this a little bit more as we go. Uh, some trail development, uh, some restoration work, and then some supportive facilities uh, and some of that acquisition piece, piece like Chad just mentioned, uh, with a rough total of just over $600,000 um, with a contingency built in uh, to kind of launch this, this uh, bluff traverse project. So, with a little bit more detail there, kind of first step um, is we are we're working with some landowners uh, actively as we speak on some acquisition opportunities uh, to help uh, develop the alignments of the trails that were proposed. Uh, and then uh, one of the first big pieces that we'd like to move forward on uh, this spring would be looking at the ar archaeological and biological assessments. Um, and that wouldn't be uh, just for um, one specific area where we'd like <coughs> to start development, uh, but ideally we'd like to look at the whole Bluffs Traverse area to get a good snapshot of what we're looking at and have some uh, good mapping and direction from those folks uh, as we move forward through the development over the next few years. Next piece, uh, we're looking at specifically some uh, trail development within Bluffside Park. Uh, so uh, what we were looking at proposing would be the um, development of a beginner loop, and this map's uh, somewhat fuzzy, I apologize, but a beginner loop at uh, Holzinger Lodge uh, area starting and heading through Bluffside Park, as well as an intermediate um, loop that would go um, up from uh, the base of Bluffside and Holzinger Lodge up to the top side, and then have a, a gravity flow trail um, that would make its way back down to Holzinger Lodge. Uh, in addition, we're looking at a section of hiking trail as well, um, and those alignments you can reference on the map that's printed out in front of you as well. And I realized, I'll apologize, that uh, my nice picture of really uh, great uh, flow trails with kids on it didn't make it in, so I'll bring that to the next one. Uh, but some of the supporting facilities that we're looking at uh, are things like um, this outdoor climbing boulder, and I'll show you a few more pieces too. Uh, but really these supporting facilities uh, I think are an important piece of the Bluffs Traverse plan and really connecting the activities that the Bluffs Traverse provides to right here in downtown. So some of these facilities like an outdoor climbing boulder where kids and families could hang out and try these activities out, enjoy it while they're looking at the sugar loaf where we have sport climbing <clears throat> is a great way to kind of bring that full circle. And we see that communities that have these things in place often have events or just groups of people on a nice sunny day. So when it hits 32, maybe we could be outside. <laughs> um, Next piece would be a skills course, which would provide some features similar to what you see here. Uh, again, with that theme of connecting uh, the Bluff Traverse and our outdoor recreation that we have um, to the community, this is a great way for kids and families uh, to go to a local park um, right here in like, downtown or Lake Park, wherever it may be, and start to learn some of those um, skills that would be then transferable to the trail system. Uh, and again, to see something like that in action, uh, people of all ages uh, really seem to enjoy these, these opportunities. Uh, and again, just building those skills, uh, or you just have a couple hours to kill, and you can go out and uh, get some laps in. Another one would be um, a paved or um, unpaved, there are a few different options, but a pump track, uh, similar to what you see here. Um, 
which again, it's skill development, it's an opportunity for an alternative recreation experience and transferable skills of, and showcasing what we would have in the bluffs right here in town. Um, so just some pictures of that, different options that we'd have available. Uh, and then again, I just wanted to mention uh, that these things that we're proposing would be great opportunities to kickstart the Bluffs Traverse and really help develop the narrative when we go for larger grant funds like Legacy uh, or other funding sources that we've identified uh, for those larger uh, support facilities such as restrooms, uh, pavilions, parking, uh, nicer kiosks and the, those larger components as well as development of additional trails within the system uh, to help fully develop the Bluffs Traverse. So that's kind of where this piece fits into that puzzle. Uh, and then again, uh, just as I turn it back over to Chad, just kind of a different view of the breakdown uh, of those um, those costs associated with those projects. Okay, Mayor and Council, a few other items uh, tonight in our update. Um, as you can see from the images uh, that Ross showed up, no, the longer view of the Bluff Traverse. We do have some private property owners that are within that area. And we're currently working with um, some of those folks um, on acquiring or negotiating easements um, or access to those private properties. So those individuals that are, we, we are currently negotiating with, um, we're getting closer to some of those agreements, meaning um, we're seeking longer-term recreational easements so that we can meet grant requirements. Um, one specific is the Woodlawn property. Um, we think we're, again, probably within a month, maybe two months, from coming back to Council with a recreational easement for Woodlawn to access their property. And again, there we're seeking a 25-year uh, recreational easement so that it meets those grant requirements. And again, the state is going to give us a lot of money. We hope they're going to want some assurance that we've got access to the property where we're building trails. Um, and so we are reaching out to those private individuals who own private property in those, in those areas. The development, though, that we're currently proposing is all on current, current property, or the rest of the development is on cur um, our current own public property. Woodlawn, again, was probably the, the largest piece that you see on, on that map. Um, we will also seek um, approval from private property owners from, again, east to west uh, for the ability to go onto private property to do those assessments or surveys that Ross mentioned. So if um, a landowner or a private landowner is not currently interested in a recreational easement or in the future they change their mind, we think it's beneficial that we do the, those biological and archaeological surveys from the whole traverse so that we don't go back and get just a parcel. So we'll seek that from those private property owners as well. Um, the financial chart, I did, did want to make obviously a couple comments about that. At the pre-council meeting, I think in February, we mentioned several funding options. I think we went over anywhere between 10 and 12 options for council. At the next meeting, Steve and I will bring forward a recommendation on how to fund um, this portion of the trail development. I will note that the, the 606000 is not what we would recommend. What you don't see here tonight is the other funding sources where other dollars could come from. So that could come from um, a reduction in um, some land acquisition. It could come in the form of another fund within the city is going to pay for part of this project. It also could come from private donation. And so the March 18th recommendation is not going to be 606000 We'll bring all of those funding store sources and revenue streams to you. But we do need to make that recommendation on the 18th. And again, to remind you that in order for us to go out for authorizations to bid, to do some survey work, or do land acquisition, we, we've, got, we've got to do the implementation phase. Um, if, in fact, we're going to go and try and seek some of these legacy dollars. It is likely that Steve and I would, would do a recommendation that would involve an interfund loan for a project like this because we are in the middle of a budget year. Uh, we would like to have the park fund that we mentioned at the pre-council meeting stay intact and not use those dollars for this project. 
We would like to use that fund to supplement other projects in the future. And one of those being the operation and maintenance. So if we, again, if we were awarded large dollars from the state and we have to start beginning, the question came at the last council meeting, how do we maintain this new property that we developed? That that fund then could be used to do some of that initial operation and maintenance work before we could actually then start bringing proposals forward in an annual budget basis. So we would recommend that that fund stay intact. The other piece of that is, as we talked in pre-council meetings, and I think through the budget process, this would also allow there, allow money to be in that fund if in fact council does approve some allocation to the park fund. Because we've talked that there's a payroll budget balance certainly came out loud and clear through all of the discussions within the park comp plan. Uh, we, we saw when the room was filled the other night uh, here at this council chamber that people want us to get going on this project. Again, we're going up against some of those timelines. If we don't meet those timelines, we're several cycles away again from trying to seek those larger grant dollars. So just keep that in mind. So with that, if you have any questions that we have to What's the deadline for the legacy application? Mayor and Council, that would be uh, end of June. I think specifically it's the last day of June, but I'm not 100% sure. Other questions? Oh, really? um, the um, proposed developments that you have, is that like a bundle or is it an a la carte thing um, I'm mainly asking because of the um, the boulder and the pump track and the skills course like where do those go and are there options for people who are not um, fully ambulatory if I am concerned that we're saying only people of certain abilities are able to use these things and I I want to make sure that we're considering people who are maybe wheelchair bound, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Uh, those supportive facilities uh, are facilities that would ideally be located <coughs> down in town here, say at Lake Park uh, or Levy Park or uh, under the bridge, potentially as well. So those would be more accessible facilities. Um, and what? And what about the actual? Like, all, everything I saw, which they look really lovely and fun, but they all look to be for people who are in a certain physical condition and able to walk on their own. Um, so I'm just concerned that we are pushing away certain citizens who might not have all those abilities. Is that, are there no alternatives?
important to note that we are committed to balancing these projects and so we're making sure that whether it's the connection to the flyway or the riverfront trail system we know those are going to especially the riverfront is going to take some time those will be you know very accessible uh, by design and so um, you know folks that keep hearing bluff side bluff side uh, bluff traverse bluff traverse we are committed to balancing these projects and making sure that some of these also get done down uh, here for the rest of us in the city. Okay. Well, thank you. Moving on to new business item 5.1 is the neighborhood planning project contract. We would motion to authorize the signing of the contract. Second. By George, seconded by Paul. Discussion? None. Well, Brian's here. Anything did you? Yes. I'm here. Joe, Mary, and I, we had a really great conversation last month about this project, and we're excited. There's a lot of enthusiasm in the neighborhood, and looking forward to it. We'll be in regular contact with everybody throughout the process. Okay. Talk a little bit about your online discussion presence and your thoughts about those bi weekly meetings or whatever. Oh sure, yeah. So a couple of things. So we're uh, we're developing some social channels. So we're, we've got a, a new Facebook group for those who use that. Uh, we're developing an email list. Um, we've also been on the ground, kind of building a good network of East End folks. Um, and then also too, uh, as this being a strong collaboration with the city, with the rural, with the folks in the neighborhood. Um, starting in a few weeks, we're going to be doing biweekly meetings and planning strategic meetings too, which will be open to folks too to talk about updates and plans. And not many shy people in the fourth ward. Not so far. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Are you ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Cheers. Item 5.2 <clears throat> is the Community Forest Grant Expansion. I would move that, uh, move to approve the resolution before us. Second that. Motion by George, second by Pam. Discussion? I have a question. Sure. I don't know who I direct this at. Um, does any of this um, grant cover working on the area where the deer park is? Uh, Mayor and Council, this uh, grant would mostly be around the deer park, not okay. in the deer park, uh, but some of those trees in the predominantly the campground, uh, but also the boat launch area. Um, and, uh, yeah, around the deer <coughs> park, but not in the deer park. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Curious. Item 7.1 is council concerns. Why don't we start with Eileen tonight? Oh boy. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank people from um, Board 2 and beyond who attended the Planning Commission meeting on Monday. I was sorry to have missed it. I was out of town for my day job, uh, so I couldn't make it. But thanks for giving your input. No. Um, I bring greetings from a former council member around this table, uh, Dieter Milamanka, who is uh, doing well in Washington State. I was contacting him because I was concerned about their snowfall, especially in the Seattle area, Seattle-Tacoma area. He says he and his wife were, uh, you know, snowed in for two days out there, but having lived here, they're used to that, so he is doing well. Um, and just a reminder, coming up on Wednesday, March 6th, there will be a public open house in the Masato Room here at City Hall uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 regarding those that uh, have uh, concerns or questions about uh, the proposed reconstruction of Riverview Drive coming up this year. So if you're interested, uh, it's a good way to get some information on it and some timelines and looking forward to it, although it you know, will be a good project when it's finished. It may obviously have some disruption going forward. And that's all. Okay, thanks. Em? Yes, I would like to request that staff take another look at alternative actions and plans for Winona's Deer Park, along with consequences of actions and consequences of not taking action. There's been a lot of uh, news lately about chronic wasting d disease spreading throughout the whole state of Minnesota. 
um, where it's, it has been primarily confined to southeast Minnesota. Now it's in the northern north of Minnesota. Uh, the governor just put forward a $4.5 million funding package to fight chronic wasting disease, partly because uh, experts are saying that yes, there is a good chance that it could be, could be uh, a human problem too. So it's a problem for deer right now. It's always fatal to deer. But uh, a lot of experts, uh, let's see, who is he? He's uh, Osterholm, Michael Osterholm, University of Minnesota. Uh, what is the name of his? Anyway, he's uh, the disease. come out. What is his, his State title? Epidemiologist. State epidemiologist. State yeah. epidemiologist. Yes, he's come out several times in prominent news stories saying, "Let's let's take a serious look at this." So I'd like to see what we are doing at, with the deer park, <coughs> even though uh, <coughs> some time ago it came up and a lot of people called me out of really a sincere fondness for the deer park. I think the issue is really much bigger than that now. So, All right. Thank you. Paul? Well, uh, I have a couple things. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, uh, the Chamber for uh, writing a resolution for uh, supporting the second train uh, in Phase 2 study. I know that that was sent out, and I, I know that there is a, a Senate bill now, so we actually have... <laughs> Uh, bills in in both houses, and and I'm very hopeful this year that we'll be able to get funding for the phase two of the Twin City Chicago Milwaukee uh, train that's also called the second train. Um, I also want to thank our street crews for plowing to the ditch in our neighborhood rather than toward our drives. That was uh, helpful and beneficial. Um, and it, made it a lot easier to keep keep my driveway clear, so I thank the street crew. Um, and then uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, Pedal for the People, who had their fifth ride um, of the season, and they've been riding uh, once, once a month, uh, uh, and they collect uh, donations uh, at their stop uh, once they're uh, refueling. And... Um, They've collected more than $600 for different charities here in, in Winona in the last four months, and they'll be having another ride on March 23rd. And I want to encourage people to come out safely ride, uh, and they'll be continuing their rides all year long. And they're always collecting uh, uh, donations for different charities in town. So I just want to acknowledge it. Thank you, George. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I agree, Mayor, with you how <clears throat> all the people are getting together in their neighborhoods and doing each other's sidewalks and shoveling out, helping shovel out trucks and cars and everything else. And uh, it's really a sign of bringing everybody together. So the snow does some good. And also uh, to our friends that are over in Poland, I wish them a good productive trip and a safe trip and see them back here. Thank you. Under the consent agenda, there are four items. Approval of the minutes from February 19th. The final adoption <coughs> of an ordinance to rezone parcel at 2015 Garvin Heights Road. A final adoption of an ordinance to remove the one hour and two hour parking on 5th Street. And a claim against the city by Tracy Kapusman. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second that. Motion by Al, seconded by Pam. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.